What is going on, everybody? Welcome to week number 11, year number four. We've got Camu against Nebraska State. Camu is in free fall mode, as we talked about in the preview video yesterday. Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle this year. Jace Freeman is having some personal issues right now, but he is going to try to rebound here against this Nebraska State team. It's a team that Camu has had some success against in recent years. They are 2-1 and one over the last or should I say, over the course of this dynasty. So, hey, ball is in our court, Nebraska State. We have to show up big here today. And Corey Hargrove taking over for the injured Dante LaBelle needs to make a few statement runs here in the early going. Yes, D Dante LaBelle is going to be out for quite a significant amount of time. And look at Hargrove, man. He does this every week on a week-to-week -week basis, making really nice plays, sick plays. That spin move is going to get him the first down. And then on a third and one, Shinoski's going to get dropped short. So the question is, you guys going to go for it? And you do, and guess what? He gets stuffed. Didn't work. Landon Wade gets annihilated there. Freeman has a second and 11 here. Has all day to throw, and he's going to find Lacey. It's Rasheed Lacey for 31. Interesting that there are three Nebraska State defenders there, and none of them attempted to pick the ball off. Yeah, nothing happened. Camu on the board with a field goal. Hargrove. Oh, Ooh, showing just, some nice power right there. It goes for 12. You might have to give Hargrove the starting job and then just let Dante LaBelle be your power guy. Could be. I mean, I like what Hargrove can do with all the moves. Yep. I like using him uh, jukes, spins, whatever. Oh. How about this throw? That did not go where I actually did, but I did not see Stillwell just sitting there lurking in the shadows. Ouch. Ouch, that hurts. So Nebraska State's leaves, points up on the board. Third and ten, put pressure on Freeman. He's only got 62 yards up to this point. We're already in the second quarter, so you guys are playing really good defense right now. Only giving up three points, and the offense has got to come through, though. That's yeah. the big thing. Yeah, looking for some offense here. Let's like, see, Shinoski's rolling, just throws it away. Where did all that arm strength come from? But he is technically in the pocket, but he was 20 yards downfield so trying to visualize where the pocket is is a little bit difficult here's Pryor oh. with the first down <laughs> and he just drops it look at oh. this he was at the yard to gain that's a first down that's 32 yards third and 30 and an incomplete pass here Jeremy Collins with the deflection I totally hear you man I totally hear you you got to come through but Dixon oh, oh yeah Dixon with the interception and he can't get enough speed to get it in the end zone, but you know what? That's a good play for a middle linebacker. Like, I mean, he's not a guy that's going to catch a lot of footballs his way. Well, yeah, well, the fact that they turned it over in that type of field position was bad news for Camu. So it's now 7-3, to three and another opportunity there for Nebraska State's defense, Sullivan. Cannot get in position to make the play, though. Third and 11, going to Jameel Carter for 16. So Carter, again, trying to stay involved in the offense. Quentin Wiggins takes a shot at Freeman, but still completes it for a first down. This oh. time we get the sack, though, bringing some pressure. That's Quentin Wiggins. Yeah, I feel, like, hitting home. I feel like Freeman has so much pressure on him right now, he can't even make a solid, a solid throw, an accurate throw. Nope. Nebraska State holds Camu to a field goal. Here's John Tavius Nichols. So why do we show kickoffs? Up, good things happen. Setting up a nice little return. Going down. Breaks a tackle. Oh, no. Gets an extra 25 yards out of that. It's going to be a 69-yard return. Here's to Kimberling. First oh! play with the dive. Touchdown. Prairie Dogs. Kimberling with the huge touchdown reception. Going to put Nebraska State up by seven right now. But watch this, guys. Little hook play. That was 40. Kyle Owens, the true freshman. He tried to come in and pick it off, but, man, way to turn on a dime for Kimberly. Yeah, here's Sidney Layton, the fullback. He's got room. Dixon goes for the legs, trips him up, gets to about the nine, though. Third and 14 situation after some negative plays. Freeman goes up the middle to Diego Dobbs, and they got to settle for the field goal. We call timeout because we want that ball back. Field goal is up and good. There's enough time to make something happen here. 30 seconds left. Shinoski, nothing open downfield, so he's going to go 
up the middle fork for eight. We got a couple. We got a couple nice plays here happening in the last I don't know two minutes yeah. of this game. And we're running the same play going up the seam to Pryor, and we're gonna call timeout here. Nine seconds. Going to Pryor again. Got Gets it. it down at the down at the one yard line. Unbelievable. Okay, we got timeout. Five seconds. We're gonna run a play. We're audibling. I got Getting that. the play we want. Here it is. Oh, Smith cuts. He was almost down at the one. Wow. But he made a sharp cut towards the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah. A guy with Pryor's size getting dropped at the one yard line like that. It's just nuts. Just crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But I mean, Smith, every week. Smith was almost down there. Yeah. But he cut willed. really hard. He willed his own way yeah, absolutely. past the one yard line monster. But Hargrove, we're just singing his praises here, but he's going to fumble the football. In a 21-9 game, yeah. start of the third quarter. This was after a couple three and outs for both teams. Well, one apiece. But, I mean, offense is not doing great today. But Camu trying to move the football. They still have some room for improvement here today. I mean, they've been close three times. Had to settle for three field goals. <laughs> what in the world is that? Chase Freeman does play a little bit of baseball here in Was he so. shortstop? Yeah, a little bit. Watch him. Look at that. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You gotta be bleeping me. He's got to basically turn his shoulders and turn his hips. And he's aim a little bit higher and he still throws a dime. Here's Sydney Layton. Oh, oh come on. The big man keeps his feet in bounds. Or did he? Or did he? That's the question now, isn't it? There's a great little spin move here. We'll see the replay. Freeman throwing a dart. And Layton, I mean fullback, he's a he's a pounder. He's not known for his hands, but oh. Look at the footwork, the fancy footwork we'll here. See the close up. So not there. Okay. Not there. Oh. Is that I it? I think that's it. I think that was it right, there. right there. I see a cleat. I see a cleat on that yep. white. Yep. He stepped out right there, right guys. Right there. No green to be found. And no call from the zebras. They are on the take officially. Nebraska State going underneath here to Ooh. Smith. He gets. Hit into Rocked. another universe. But we run a sneak. Get the first down. Risky call there, I guess. But, you know, nothing nothing crazy. Here's Kimberling on third and four. And that sets up another fourth and inches. You guys going to go for it? Yeah, we're going for it. Landon Wade up the middle. This time we get it. Unlike the first quarter. Prairie Dog faithful are happy. Here's Shinoski read option oh, on the in. wide You're receiver in. option. You're in. You're He's in. in. Even had a little flair added on to that. Always got the flair going on. We 28 to 16, guys, and we are going late into the third quarter. 50 seconds left to go, and Jace Freeman. Oh, oh no, the switching. The switching. <laughs> well, why would the computer go into the block? I don't know. Come on, you track to, the ball carrier. You have to ask uh, EA that. But Rashid Lacey with a 23 yard touchdown. That's a really nice throw from Jace. A okay. better play for Rashid Lacey. So one second to go in the third quarter. And again, why do we show kickoffs, guys? Well, good things happen. Ho! Oh, oh, look at this. We got some room. It's up to the kicker. He's got no speed. John Tavius Nichols. He's gassed. Oh, he almost oh. collapses. Okay. Okay. <laughs> some transparency here. I was dying laughing watching this game because yeah. you dove and you freaked out because of the animation you're like am i gonna get stopped at the one well i wanted the flare you know yeah you always do the flare in the corner of the end zone and then when he collapsed i was worried that oh. he was gonna be down <laughs> i'm just gonna go with the narrative that he was gassed after that run yeah i mean come on he yeah changed direction broke a tackle ran it spread it as hard as he could makes sense camu's not finished I mean, they got back in the game with that touchdown, but they gave it right back. They keep coming back. I know, but I think they're going to stay in the mix until we see here an INT. That's Zaire Sullivan with the pick. Freeman, just not a good throw right there. No, I mean, something's up. Something's going on with him. So within the last two seasons, you know, he's actually seen some regression. So yeah. whatever is going on with the offense, whatever's going on with the play calling, he's not the same Jace Freeman. No, he's not. Same Ben Chanowski. Little read option there, going for 33 yards, and we're trying to kill off a bit of this quarter here, running the football with Watson, but 
you know, fourth and ten. That's going to set up a punting situation. Cam has got a fourth and one scenario here, and Eric Payne hmm. is causing me pain in my. It's, it's very illegal cortex. That's, that's, cortex. It's extremely illegal to tackle yeah. the center. Why would you tackle a center? I don't know. Second, I don't know. Second and 15, and here's a strike to Andre Irvin for 19 yards, guys. That's going to be a touchdown for Camu. But it's now a five-point game here, and Nebraska State will successfully run this clock out with an eight-yard Ryan Watson run. And Nebraska State gets the W. This is not what I expected coming into this game. I thought Camu was going to play one of their best games of the year. And it was a little bit more of the same. It was kind of close but no cigar kind of situation for the Amber Wave. So we're going to go here, Odessa State, Denver Tech. Thoughts on this game? Well, I said in the preview video that I was circling this game, even in preseason, thinking that Odessa had a lot of things going right for him in the offseason with the recruiting, recruiting class, with Cameron Willis, with Paris Austin, that number one offense, and then we're starting off like this. Yeah, do stuff like that. Austin had a nice catch, but early INT. And here is Napoleon McQueen. That's the first play from scrimmage for DIT. And he's going to pick up almost 20 yards. Makovic throwing, got all day. Hits McQueen out of the backfield. That's a first down. And McQueen is going to be shaken up on that play. No matter, though, they have Scott Thomas as the number two back. Going up the middle for five. And now Makovic runs read option, gets the blockers down at the one. And Alex Makovic going to walk into the end zone for a two-yard touchdown, as a matter of fact. Denver Tech up 7-0, bombs away for a touchdown. Jabari McCollum, the four-year player for Odessa State. Cameron Willis responds. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to say that. This exact word I was going to use was that's the response that they needed against this number five team in Denver Tech. You gotta you gotta come hard right after them. You can't play conservative. You gotta play aggressive against Denver Tech. This is the only way you're gonna be able to beat them. But they are driving yet again. And Makovic's gonna power his way through to the end zone for a four yard touchdown, 14 to seven. Denver Tech gets that touchdown right back. Second and seven situation here. And again, Cameron Willis forcing the throw. I mean, it's really, I think it's just the fact that Willis is not used to playing this proactive of a defense because of the, th the throw was there. Yeah. And just Prater just cut it off. Yep. That yep. throw is usually there against, you know, like Midland State or somebody. Not going to be there against Denver Tech. No, they're going to be jumping routes all night. Yeah. You guys already saw it. That's two interceptions already for Cameron Willis that they've jumped the routes. Makovic again for his third rushing touchdown of the game. We talked about it in the preview video. He's got to get he's got to get his touchdown count up to start pushing up to the Heisman ranking. He's got to stay healthy too because he's had a couple issues with that over the years. Odessa desperately trying to stay in this ball game here. Paris Austin catches that one for 19. We got 256 left, and then another tight throw. Marquise Cleveland going to break it up. Odessa's got to settle for the field goal, and then Scott Thomas going outside gets he's 14. He's still up. He didn't even go down. No. And here's Makovic. Makes oh! one cut. No way. One cut, and he was finished. Third and six right now. Got to hold him. And they do get the sack. Good play there. That's going to be gonna be Simmons with the sack. Well, it's going to hold them to a field goal. And again. Another one. Another one. Dude. It's three interceptions for Cameron Willis. With no time left in the half. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that. Oh, he just gifted him another touchdown. Denver Tech fans trying to entertain themselves. Thirty-four to ten. I thought them. I thought Odessa State had a chance in this I, game. I don't think it's their time yet. No, nope, apparently not, because we got Makovic just balling out today, guys. He's running all over this. I don't know. Pretty soft. Pretty soft defense for Odessa. And then look at Andre Kenny. Tight end. Wow. Blaine Beverly has to come on. Makovic, they want to be cautious with him. He took a shot on yeah. that drive there. and They're going to have Beverly finish this one out. But 41-10, to 10, maybe Odessa can get something going. Tommy Nance going to score. 
Late in the third, Cameron Willis gonna score. So Odessa trying to fight their way back into this, but it's 47 to 24, last chance here at three minutes. And Willis gonna go down for the sack. So that's all the highlights we got from the second half because this game was a little mini blowout. A little mini blowout, yes. It wasn't a complete blowout, but Odessa came back just a little bit. I call them mini blowout, yeah. yeah. Mini, mini blowout. blowouts. Yep. And because that game was such kind of a kind of a stinker, we're gonna give you guys yeah. a bonus game. McAllen and Amarillo. The Brock Musselman Bowl. This is what I think the people out there want to see. Six and a half minutes here in the first, so we're just getting underway. And then Keon Sykes. Oh, oh. We always talk about it. Former transfer from Ardmore. First and ten. And, uh-oh, missed tackle here. Power Whoa. through. Power through. Made three people hit each other. He's going to the end zone. Keon Sykes with two huge runs. And Amarillo finds themselves up 7-0. In this game, we gotta see the replay on this. The aerial shot, Boom. and whoa, okay, wow, how about that? So okay. they run into each other, do they trip over each other? Sykes keeps his balance, okay. Harkless Blair, first drive, got a third and seven, and no good on the conversion. So let's see what Bollinger's got in store. First pass for uh, his day, and he's picked off by Cisneros. It. And that was the first throw of the game for Bollinger, so the running game was really looking good there. Passing yeah. game, not so much. Yeah, he just should have just stuck to the run, man. I agree. I mean, hey, I'm interested to see, really, though, like Brock Musselman, what his offensive strategy is going to be. I think he's... Against McAllen. Yeah, he wants to bring it to the Matadors, rub it in a little bit. Look at oh, this catch, though, by Charles Brady. That's an amazing grab. It's an amazing wow. grab. Even better throw. And we got to see the replay on this one again. Harkless going to the sidelines, the pylon. And the big receiver, Brady, is going to haul it in. Even got the toe tap. First and ten. And oh, oh, what a catch by John Hunter. So, And then he just throws the football. A vicious in. spike there. Oh, he's all pumped up, man. I would be pumped up, too. This is what, like, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Like, Musselman, I want to see, like, an aggressive play calling scheme. And that fits the bill there. Bollinger with the football back, oh. third and 12, throwing a dime downfield. That's going to be a Ryan Bradshaw. That's a big target you can hit downfield. I like that throw. Third and six, three seconds left to go in the first quarter. And, and the field goal is good. It's good. Bollinger's mad, though. He wanted a little more time. I think he had a guy he wanted, but needed uh, you know, a millisecond there. No, man, he was pissed he didn't get the three points. Yeah, that's it. Third and seven situation, and nice Nice play there to Quan Quan. He's going to get 13 on that play. Second and six. Blitz coming from the outside. And again. Holy. Wow. Look crap. at Ryan Bradshaw just powering through everybody. You said it, man. Big body. Yeah. You got to keep giving it to him. It's Four catches for 94. And a touchdown for John Hunter. He's got two now in this game. This guy is a little bit underrated. I agree with that. Amarillo offense yeah. he's got some speed he's got some agility i like that player mccallan just nothing much going on right now but they're trying to get the passing game going harkless faced with another third down and this time he takes off and loses the football gonna go down in the books as a sack there that's von borstel that's one of the deals when you're a running type of offense and you predicate everything off the run once you get into a little bit of a shootout once you get into a hole it's hard to come back if that's yeah. what you're going to keep on doing that one is a drop, though. Will not count. Harkless is going to ride the bench here after that hit on that last drive. So this is our first look at Rodrigo Alfonso. He looks pretty good. He hasn't missed yet. He's got a few completions in a row. Right now he's 5-5, five of five, but he is going to take off here. And that football's oh, loose. No, I was going to say, just get down, man. You, you got the first down. You, you hero-balled it, but dang. Amarillo comes up with the forced fumble. Fumble recovery with 34 seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, Schaefer going to get the ball. For the Dillos, he got 34 seconds to do something with it. Bollinger, I, t I said aggressive. Think aggressive. Oh. Oh. This tackle here. Huge catch by Quan Quan. Wow, that's going to add to the stat total for him. 45 yards and then Amarillo's kicker. It's the running joke. 
Wow, 27 to 7. I didn't see this coming. I thought McAllen was going to play way better. Even with Alfonso, I mean, this team is good enough to beat Amarillo. Yeah, you would Not think. Not to put Amarillo down, but, I mean, McAllen's looked really good this year. Number six team in the nation, and they're getting... They're getting yeah, trounced. Yeah, they're getting ripped up. This is one good. of these games, you know, out west and uh, in Texas, and a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of hype building up. It's yeah. just got that atmosphere when you're watching that. Especially with the, the head coach change yep. and all that. Alfonso's going to take it in for eight. So head coach for the Matadors, Leroy Jackson, going back to the run here as if nothing changed at the quarterback position. 27-14, to 14, so McAllen has a chance. Amarillo trying to shut the door. But Bollinger has been pinpoint accurate ever since that first interception. Yep. First and goal situation, and wow, he fit that one in a tight, tight window. Quan Quan gets the touchdown. And if there's a replay here, I would love to see this because watch this throw. Ooh. I that think the tight. linebacker just totally missed it. Quan Quan with those strong hands able yep. to corral it. That was a Banyas, the middle linebacker, just a lift. 34 on the to 30. 34 14. Fourth and inches. Buckley not going to make it. And they elect a punt. Pretty conservative call here. Here's Keon Sykes up the middle for 11. Going back to him. I mean, he hasn't had too much noise since that first quarter. Here's Sykes again with a nice stiff arm. Oh, man. He took a shot, and he lost the ball. So McAllen trying to survive, and they were on the brink right there. Look at this hit here by Finley. He goes boom. Yeah, he hit the man. football. I mean, he was, he was looking, and he was aiming for the football. Just punched it out. In a, in a real good fashion. So right? they got, hey, they're down by three scores. Need a miracle. It can be done. Got a, barely enough time. Blair does check in, by the way. Blair is back, so they're going to put this game on his shoulder. Third and eight. Just destroyed. Bull rush. Absolutely destroyed. There was no blocking for him right there, so they got to give the football back, man. Well, they, yeah, they got the one field goal, but a floater. No, 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 no. Oh, man. Keon. This one's going the other way. Come Can't on. catch him. Keon, get him. He's got You got him. That's a late decision. Commit to a tackle right there. And Trevor Cisneros, again, gets the INT. So McAllen, I mean, they had to settle for field goal there. They really had no choice. But now they need to make up two scores somehow. They're on life support. Let's get this onside kick. Not going to get no. it. No. Not going to get it. So Amarillo recovers. One minute and 49 seconds to go. And we're just going to be running the football out, it looks like, for Amarillo. And Keon Sykes gets to 10 yards. There's Brock Musselman. And he is upset. He's a proud reason. coach. <laughs> well, you know, like you want everything to be perfect. You want 100% perfect. One guy that didn't pick up his block, he's upset. Yeah. That's a kind of a winning attitude. But may not he know can, how to manage a game. He can take it easy tonight. He got his revenge on yes. the University of McAllen. Now let's check this one out here. We got a rivalry game. Broken Arrow. You guys remember this team? Kind of irrelevant this year. But they got a big rivalry game here against Ardmore. This is a game that's going to make or break their season. Their disaster of a season. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in any rivalry game, when your team is playing like dog doo-doo, yeah, you're looking at your rival and you're thinking that, we're going to beat you. If we're going to beat yeah. anybody, we're going to beat you guys. Yeah. But Ardmore has a lot to play for and a lot on the line here. We we have national championship aspirations, so we are trying to, to do some good things here in this game and really just blow them out. Vinny Peck with a 41-yard yeah. catch. And this isn't going to stop, guys. We're going to try to bomb it deep on them. We're going to be try to... We're going to try to play aggressive. Well, I mean, you know, you look at a guy like Gatlin, the safety there. I mean, this, these guys won the Big 12 last year. Yeah. So they have some pride, you know, and the season has been terrible, but like we were talking about, they want to win this one, but they're already in a 7 nothing hole. Custom recruit Buster Smith checks in here to play quarterback wow, he threw off this balance. week. And look at that throw to Yancey. He threw wow. off his back foot. He had a little Banzel action right there. That's kind of what he does. I mean, he was an option quarterback in high school. He, he's a you know a diminutive lefty who can run. So he's going to be kind of creative. That's going to be his MO, I think, for Uba, and they want to see what they got with him this year. It's a smart move. Smart move. I mean, Lamont Christian hasn't given you anything, and watch this. Uba with the touchdown. Buster Smith 
just turn it on a dime. He's pumped up. Okay. I love, it. love it. I like seeing that. Even though I'm trying to win this game, I like seeing Buster Smith have some success here. So Hicks and the Thunderwolves are charging right down the field forward down the field. 15 yard reception there and Hicks on the speed option is going to go ahead and take it in. Two yard run. 14-7. That was a quick score. Buster Smith read option. No. Whoa, he's loose. Oh no. Anders can't tackle him. Nobody's going to get him. He's got blocking. He's got a wall. This is unreal. Get him. Oh, Smith down at the one and a half yard line. Oh, Buster, why are you doing this to me now? So, okay, Broken Arrow came to play. Yeah, okay, you got a game on your hands. You officially. Yes, we do. Have a game. Ardmore back with the football, third and 11. We are looking to fire deep to, to Ayo Chukwendu. He's got the catch. That's going to be good for 33 yards. We're first and goal here at the two. Nothing open. Just kidding. Leander Ransom in the back of hey, the Hey, that was zone. one yard. We missed it. Oh, it was a one yard line? One yard line. I said two yard line. Yeah, I thought it was two. But Leander Ransom is going to get the touchdown. It's a really good throw by Hicks. Oh, oh, I was a little worried there. Oh, stop him. Second and 19. They're going to get 12. On Smith barely that got that out. He almost got sacked. I, <laughs> I saw either Woolridge, I think, had a, had a B line on him. We got second and inches here for Buster Smith, and he's going. That read option. Oh, my God. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my whoa. God. The blocking. The blocking, guys, is insane. <laughs> it's insane. We didn't have. We didn't even touch him. We did not touch him. <laughs> Look at the replay. Oh, man. We didn't even touch it, man. That's brutal. So touchdown, Uba. It's 21 to 21. Hicks fired into the end zone, almost picked off. He's having himself a pretty solid game. 271 yeah. for two scores, but yeah. that was brothers on the coverage again. One of the alumni from the championship team last year, wanting wanting to go out on a high note, makes a great play there. Holds Armour to a field goal. Yes, yeah, Snyder comes out, kicks that field goal up and good, and at least we got the lead. I mean, this has been disaster scenario, trying to contain Buster Smith. So we're bringing the blitz. We're trying to come up with some more creative ways in order to stop him, and we do there. And, oh, almost picked off, but Zach Flores able to hang on to it. Faintest nine with the tackle. It's going to be first and goal right Got now, it. and here's Leander Ransom in for the touchdown. It's going to be 31 to 21. We're up by okay. 10 now. Yeah, a little bit of a cushion going on here. Yep. But as explosive as Buster Smith has been running the football, you cannot rest on your laurels quite yet. Third and seven. Smith going up the middle to Louis Preston. He of the 99 Speed Club right there. Mm -hmm. Taking a draw this time. Preston. Oh, he, he drops the, the ball. ball. Or did he? I don't think he did. I think he was down. Yeah, this is going to get overturned. But it's going to be second and inches. Going back to Preston. Gets that first down. So Uba has been running the ball successfully in this yeah. game. Well, and the thing is, we know that Ardmore's defense is not the greatest. And you guys can see it there. Buchanan Simmons, where's the coverage in the backfield? I have no idea. But how do you let a guy like that burn you? I'm really interested to see the career path development between Orion Bradshaw and Buchanan Simmons because they're very similar mm -hmm. in stature and skill set. Yep. Here's a big-time sack for Mark Barber and Broken Arrow. 31-28 game here. That's a third and 17 wow. situation. And we're going for this. Fourth and two after a catch. Here's a grab here to Eric Buchanan. He's going to get eight. That's a pretty gutsy play call by the Thunderwolves. Back in their own, behind their own 50-yard line. It's Belichick-esque right there. Yes, here is a big run for John Hicks. He's going to get caught from behind by faintest nine. It's a good play, man. It's a good play. Otherwise, that might have been a touchdown. Here's Hicks rolling out to the right. He's in. He's in for sure. There's just nothing open downfield. you got to take off and run. So Hicks gets in for the touchdown. We're back up 10 with six minutes left to go. Okay, Buster Smith needs a comeback drive. Five and a half minutes. Oh, oh boy. No! What is boy doing? He's trying to make the pick, and it didn't register. <laughs> 61 yards for Yancey. Oh, God. First and 10, and all over in the corner is Joel Holmes. Joel Holmes. Never heard of this guy. 
But he's, he's making around. He's making a catch for a touchdown. Brian Street was thrown to him last year a little bit. 38 to 35, four minutes to go. Chiquendu makes the 10 yard grab. He's got six for 78. Jake went in the triangle route. We'd like to throw that, but we're going to go to J.K. Johnson in the corner. He's going to get 18. We're up three. We're up three. We need a touchdown. No field goals right here. Hicks running oh. for his life, and that is a great play by Broken Arrow's defense to force pressure on Hicks, and we have to settle for the field goal. That's so, that's yeah. that's crucial for this team and their chances at winning this game. Oh, third winning the game. Third and five, great catch by Yancey. First down, Smith goes to Holmes. Oh, my God. First down. Did he drop the ball? He fumbled the ball, yeah. Oh, wow. We laid a big hit on him, and he fumbled the ball. But Louis Preston making some moves. Andrews and Holmes. Holmes, the defensive lineman, has to come in to make the play. Up the middle oh, to Mendoza. What? It's in the end zone for a touchdown. This game's tied. I thought he was going to get one yard line monster, but he's in. He's in, and Uba's going to take the lead with the extra point. The and number one team oh. in the nation may fall to their rival in today's game, in tonight's action. And oh Hicks is going to get God. dropped for a sack. I mean, what is happening right now? Second and 17, guys. Hicks firing to the outside. He's going to find Leandro Ransom. You just need the field goal. We need another miracle, Johnny. Come on. Third and six. And he's thinking about throwing it to Jake Wood. But oh! Oh, we got a flag. Oh, but Hicks... We don't know what it is. Get in the end zone. He can't. Faintest nine again with the tackle. It's gonna be blocking the back though. It's gonna be a per it's gonna be a clipping call. It's gonna push us back. Vinny Pack, no, what are you doing? You do keep the first down though. Yes. That's the big thing. Yes, we do, but I would really like to have that yardage back. Yeah. Seriously. 14 seconds to go, one timeout to go. We have to hurry this thing up. Hurry it up. Uh, but, okay. okay. We're not going to be able to get this off, so we got to call a timeout. Nine seconds to go here. Hicks going to the right, going to find Chiquendu, and now it's trade day time. Kick that field goal. He's got the leg. Got it. He got it. No Trey Snyder in there because he can't make that. We put the punter in to kick the field goal. Smart. And he got it. 44-42. to 42. Time is going to run out, guys, as Brothers makes it tough on Ardmore on the special teams. But Ardmore's going to win this one, guys. 44-42. I mean, wow. We could have lost that game. Put Ardmore on upset alert, guys. They've got a target on their back going forward in the rest of the season. There's a lot of close games here left to play. Broken Arrow hats off to you, but we got it done. Quick breakdown of all the games here. You guys are going to see ACU 52 to 13. They just laid the hammer on Shreveport. It's a disaster out there at the Shreve right Hey, now. they had Thaddeus Muckleroy from Orpheus McConnell. I love his names. How about that? Uh, yeah, it was 3 to 3 after a quarter, but a uh, nice little four touchdown run here by ACU in the second. Let's check out the numbers, 547 to 328. ACU getting consistently over 520 yards of offense. Shreveport with 47 yards back. Can we just take a moment to, to just laugh at that? <laughs> four to four of 15 sure. for 47 yards. We'll get to that in a minute. Russell, 251 and four. McConnell had 69 and a touchdown. David with 125. Penner also had a touchdown. Lundahl and Kirk with the two scores, and Kerry Ashley was miserable. That uh, was that's so bad. 20, Les miserable. Twenty six point three rating, twenty six percent completion percentage. I understand it's against ACU, but come on, there is no, I've never seen. I know it's a game, it's a video game, but I've never seen in real life a quarterback play that bad. Yeah, hey. Stephen Bryant, custom recruit right there, picking up 100 yards in some garbage 10 minutes. But uh, Jackson is also on the injured list right now, so he's splitting time with Riggins. It's just one of those games where it's sort of like, you know, they stuck to their game plan yeah. for a half. You look at the scoreboard, it's like 28-3, to three, and you're like, well, we can't win, guys. There's, <laughs> just no, there's no going. use in letting Ashley just go out there and wing it. I mean, right. you might as well just keep trying to work on what you do well. Right and just see what happens but yeah those that's the receiving totals for three board we saw this game 47 to 24 final denver tech gets the w 
they're going to move on. Yeah, to still being in that number five ranking and giving you a challenge out in the West. Yeah, I am coining my new term, a micro blowout, a mini blowout. I like it. It's, it's only 23 points. At the know? end of the day, 23 is not. I mean, I think a like blowout of like 30, 30 plus. 30 plus is yeah. Like, yeah, that's a blowout. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a mini blowout. Denver Tech had 374 rushing compared to Odessa with 18. Yeah, they don't try. I know, but the three turnovers is really what made the difference. Beverly had one completion for a touchdown. And Makovich. See, now here's the difference. Denver Tech, we know they can run the football, just like Shreveport can run the football. So yeah. Makovich's numbers with the pass, they're they're okay because guess what? He actually completed a lot of a lot of his attempts. That's the yeah. thing. He really got crazy, got wild on the ground though. Yeah, he did. And so the receivers didn't do much to speak of there, but you see Odessa State 32-41, 395 with the three picks for Willis. Uncharacteristic for Willis to throw that many interceptions for sure. Yeah. I think it was like you were saying, he was anticipating that throw to be there. Denver Tech just, it's a step up in class. You know? Exactly. Paris Austin with 84. It's a pretty interesting game. I mean, Three to nothing after one, and then it ends up being 35 to 30. Shinoski had himself a game, and Nichols, contrary to what this says, did not score two return touchdowns. But he did score one, and that was really the difference in this game, I think. They outgained us 461 to 377. Freeman had 403. Not a classic Camu stat line with the rushing. Gansu with 238 rushing in this one. I'm actually really surprised that. Jace Freeman had 403 passing yards in that game. Really, I'm surprised because it didn't feel like that. Yeah, I mean, they really didn't commit to the run here. You see Smith and Kimberling had those touchdowns. Freeman had 43 attempts in this one. Yeah. With three touchdowns. But look at Dobbs, Flores, and Layton. The three-headed monster, they could not get anything going, guys. Yeah, but they didn't really even try that much. We really took them away. I mean, Freeman had a lot of option reads. And I think maybe our defensive line was coached to be like, force Freeman to take it. So just take the running back, get a spy on Freeman, do something to keep him contained. And they did for the most part. Lacey had 140. Jamil Carter update, one catch for 16. So not like the game he had a couple weeks ago. Midland State against Little Rock. Midland State gets the W, 35 to 14. And again, we were talking about it in the preview. I picked a little rock because I thought that that offense was going to take care of business against that secondary for Midland State, and Midland just came out and just I mean, they beat them up. And they shut them out in the second half. Yeah. I see Kyle Wagner getting some touches there. Midland recommits to the run in this one for 213 yards. Gunnar Rivers can only accomplish 263, or can he? Here's the problem. Mm. Gunnar had to leave this game, so yep. another quarterback injury. You've had a lot. In the last two weeks, but seems like a similar stat line. Uh, Tompkins and Ashley. Yeah, four of fifteen for a pick. Not good. And that is going to explain why Little Rock went into the shell in the second half. You see, Manet and Green didn't do amazing. Lonnie Luke, same. Didn't set the world on fire. Midland State, white side. They they pulled him in. They reined him in a little bit today, as you see here. They had Kyle Wagner go off. So Tyson. We'll have to check the injury report on Wednesday, but Tyson right now took a back seat to Wagner in this game. But Wagner was one of our, our recruits, not a custom recruit, but a recent one, and he had 154 for two. That was good to see for Midland State. Midland trying to get back on track. So now Little Rock is behind the eight ball, two and three. Midland trying to work back into the mix. Brock Musselman and Amarillo gets the W that they wanted against his former school. McAllen Matador. 7-2, and two, they fall to now. 8-1, and one, Amarillo advances, and they are looking pretty darn good. Number 11 in the nation, 492 to 387. They outgained me, McAllen. McAllen had 219 rushing, even with the turnovers. Yep. They still really controlled this game from start to finish. Ballinger threw seven incompletions, and two of them went for picks. He, he gamed out, man. Yeah, he really did. I mean, I like what I saw, too, out of Bradshaw. Hunter and Alexander. So it's actually turned out to be a pretty good offense. So even when 
Ballinger leaves next year and is replaced by Galveston, I don't think Amarillo should take much of a step back, if at all. Isn't it interesting that they their offense was so bad for like two years, and yeah. now it's finally It wasn't D.D. Dukes' fault either, but right. I don't know. The sport of cast just wasn't up to speed yet. I think now that they're older, I think they're really getting it done. Harkless left the game. Rodrigo Alfonso did not throw an incomplete pass. Uh, that's, that's what I was saying in that thought. film. I was like, he's really good. He looks like he's really good. He's got a good handle throwing the football. 58 rushing yards, too. Might be the future. Could, I, I don't know. I have, I don't, I'm not really sure. But, yeah, Brady had 59 and a score. But McAllen is starting to tread some water here. It's about typical for what we've seen out of this program. We thought maybe they passed the hump. Past the barrier, but doesn't look like it right now. And Ardmore <sighs> scrapes Dude. by Uva Dude, with that, that wild fourth quarter. Yeah, that was that was insane. I mean, I don't even know how many how many minutes do we have? We had one minute and two seconds left before we were gonna be eight and yeah. one. And he that took point. that sack on the first play. Which... Yeah, that really set us back. But you know, we dug deep, we figured out a way, and we got it done. 457 passing yards, 572 yards of total offense. This one was a shootout. Um, and Buster Smith had a really, really good day. Five for five, by the way. Yeah. In red zone opportunities. We couldn't stop Broken Arrow. They came out to play. 310 yards for Buster Smith. This is his best game of his entire career. His yeah. Collegiate career. And it's something to build on, too. For sure, Preston had 95, Smith had 101, only on five carries. I know, we can't stop anybody on the run right now. That was surprising me. I thought maybe Smith would have seen some more carries. He would have the backfield. But our number one defense in the, in the ranking just didn't come didn't come out. Nope, not today. Hicks had 457 and three. Yeah, not bad. Further cementing his Heisman uh, caliber season. Yeah, two more on the ground. So Hicks was displaying his ability as a passer in this game. And you see there, Jaquendu led the way for the whiteouts. So if there's any final thoughts, I would say McAllen disappointed me today. I thought they were going to come out and beat Amarillo. Brock Musselman's looking good. Uh, I would say as well that Camu with five straight losses. Very surprising to me. Yeah, it just seems like they get on these run these get on these rolls and these runs where they can't stop the bleeding. Yeah. Last I, year we saw it with the three game losses, but they yeah. actually stopped it. For whatever reason this year, they haven't been able to stop. It. I didn't think that. I didn't think I was going to win. I thought Camu. I haven't played that great against Camu, so I thought Camu would come out and and beat me, and uh, didn't happen. Odessa State. I'm feeling like a year away. Mm -hmm. Like Willis is the bridge, but this team's collectively a year away, especially on defense. I do think they'll get pretty good next year defensively, but you know they're one one year away, and then hey. This is a wake-up call. Don't it's, take anybody lightly. Uh, yeah, no kidding. I think that we got a little bit, a little bit cocky. You know, in the last video on Saturday, we were talking about breaking arrows into eight different pieces. Yeah. Handing them their eighth loss of the season. I mean, uh, we did hand them their eighth loss of the season, but yeah, things got a little sticky, and it doesn't get any easier because now we have a McAllen team that lost last week. You'd think, you would think. The natural knee-jerk response of this would be, oh, McCown lost last week. You're, you should be able to handle them. Easy. Right. But they've got their backs up against the wall. This is a big game out in the Big 12 East. If McCown can get this W, they can get us to 5-1. and one. They yeah. go to 4-2. and two. They would keep ACU alive, even though they're at two losses in, in division now. Uh, we have Denver Tech Amarillo, though. That's a huge game. It's a very interesting game, too. The winner will be... Clearly in the driver's seat for the West, although they both have yet to play Nebraska State, which will be pretty interesting. And then Cameron Wilson, Odessa, they had a crack at one of the elite conference schools, and so now they're going to get a crack again here as they host ACU. Little Rock at Shreveport. This game's always pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It's always a, a interesting game, kind of tight usually. But yeah, uh, two very frustrated fan bases, I would say. I would agree playing, this, playing in this game. So what's going to happen? Who knows? And here's a team that I have tortured over the last three years, Midland State. Yes. Although this year they don't have quite as much riding with the three losses. But the last three years they were 
entering play the following week against Denver Tech, and we upset them three years in a row, two near the very end of the fourth quarter. So this is starting to become a a non-natural rivalry game. Yeah. It's starting to start to brew in that manner. Midland State's fans pissed off at Nebraska State fans all yeah. the time. Well, maybe they can return the favor because now I'm in a position where I'm going to be looking forward mm-hmm. to my next two games, my final two games of the year, where I play Amarillo and Denver Tech. And we're thinking up in Grand Island, we're like, this is the year. This is what we've been building towards. Coach Stephen Cost, you number four. We're this grindy Iowa State kind of team. You know, when Iowa State's good with, like, Kyle Kempt and they do these weird things, they beat teams they shouldn't, and we're like, we know we're grindy, but we're good. We win games. This is the year. And it's like, well, hey, maybe Midland can can make us a little uh, upset. If you guys are picking Midland State in this matchup, just remember that Midland State with Dexter Whiteside, like you said, they reined him in against Little Rock. So maybe does that transfer over to Week 12? Is he going to start doing Dexter Whiteside things? Goofy throws? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about on it. Wednesday. Yeah, we'll talk about it in the preview vid. So picks are available, guys, as always. And the standings have been updated as well. So make sure you guys go check that out. And just remember, Wednesday video will be posted about, what do you say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's what we always try to shoot for. If it's not posted at 2, it will be that later on that day on Wednesday. Or Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was an abomination. That was an abomination, man. No. Things just, I'm, things hey, just let us know if busy. you like that. Yeah, do you guys like maybe, that? Maybe maybe the hype is it's a little more fresh in your memory if, okay. we, if we go Fridays. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People who who don't like that idea, they're not going to say anything. It's always going to be the people who do like well, the idea. Well, just leave a little exist. comment. And let's pin it and ask people what they like. Yeah. Do you guys want the preview videos on Fridays or do you want them on Wednesdays? I I mean Fridays are kind of fun because then it's kind of like like the college yeah, game. Yeah, I always type of thing. when I watch college football on like ESPN or whatever, Friday is usually the most fun day cuz people are, are really antsy for it. You get that yep. little appetizer game yep. from the MAC or the American Athletic or Conference USA, you're just kind of watching it and Halftime rolls around. You just listen to people talk about what ha- it's going to happen tomorrow, and it's all anybody cares about. You don't care about Marshall versus Tulsa or Cincinnati versus South Florida. They're just looking forward to tomorrow. That's pretty funny that you mentioned Marshall and Tulsa. Did uh, did Marshall win in their game? In week yes, 11? they did. They won again, huh? They're undefeated. Oh my God! Go away! Ardmore's going to go through all this just to play Marshall. Screw You're that! A big asterisk. Next to your national, your little national title, Screw your that. little crystal ball is gonna have a big fat asterisk on it. I see what you did there. Screw that. Screw Marshall. Dang it, <laughs> guys. That's gonna be we it are for Marshall. It's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like and let us know again. Do you want your preview videos on Wednesdays or Fridays? Picks, pick previews, all that by Heel Boy. Same schedule be up by Wednesdays, but we will see you guys whenever you decide, Wednesday or Friday. We'll see you guys then. As always, peace.